Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 1st. First story is from dailygalaxy.com. I love astronomy stories. Um, this is probably not something that anybody's going to find really unusual that it exists. Uh, scientists in the Nas Australian National University have discovered the filament that links our galaxy both to other galaxies and all the galaxies together to the universe. They call it kind of like an umbilical cord. If you've seen pictures where they've mapped the universe, if you were able to somehow stand outside the universe and look at it, it does look like filaments or spider webs. Well, they've actually detected and started examining the uh, filaments that connect up our galaxy to the other um, globular clusters. I'll read a little bit of it right here. By examining the positions of ancient groups of stars called globular clusters, we found that the clusters form a narrow plane around the Milky Way rather than being scattered across the sky, said Dr. Stephen Keller of the, Search, of the Research School of Astronomy and Astrophysics at AMU. Furthermore, the Milky Way's entourage of small satellites are seen to inhabit the same plane. What we have discovered is evidence for the cosmic thread that connects us to the vast expanse of the universe. The filament of star clusters <coughs> and small galaxies around the Milky Way is like the umbilical cord that fed our galaxy during its youth. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I'll put a link like I do to all my stories. All the links to the full articles will be down below in the description. Next up, another thing for science and medicine. This was sent to me by Gogosaur. Thanks for sending this in. Online game folded. I have heard of the game before. I never actually even loaded on my computer or tried it, but I guess it's a game where uh, people that do gaming can help scientists out in discovery of how enzymes fold. Uh, I'm not really up on details of this at all, but the only basic thing I have heard that by learning how enzymes fold, you can it can help you diagnose and cure different diseases and also develop drugs to find those diseases. But the problem is that these enzymes are so complex trying to find the right way they fold. And as a matter of fact, in this article from BBC, they say that scientists have been struggling for this with this for about 10 years and it only took gamers a few days to actually produce the enzymes model of how it folds properly. So by using human intuition and gaming skills, they've been able to accomplish in less than a week what scientists haven't been able to accomplish in about a decade. And um, these retroviral proteases have a critical role in the development of an AIDS virus. So the study related to uh, what's going on with this particular enzyme that the game was de dealing with can actually help us develop uh, anti-AIDS drugs. So I thought that was really cool. And next up, this was sent in by Cuca Writer. Thank you for this, and I'll, I'll put the video up. There's a short 50-second video. I can, I'll just show the whole thing. I won't do the sound with it. I'll just narrate while the video is going on here. What it is is its development of stealth technology, but not in the visual range. It's the stealth technology in the infrared range. And by using these little panels and changing the heating on these little metallic panels, they both get the stealth for the night um, infrared type of radiation uh, maneuvers and stuff like that. But it's also um, not like, well, let me explain it. Originally, the developments of these were LED lights for the outside of tanks that I had seen for stealth. And the problem with them is as soon as somebody hits the tank or you know, even small gunfire can take out these LED lights and then all of a sudden your camouflage goes by the wayside. This just uses steel plates that are heated up to different temperatures to form patterns in the infrared spectrum, which gives you both the ability to blend in with the background and also the ability to even disguise your vehicle as another type of vehicle by changing its shape. Not really the shape of the vehicle, but the appearance on infrared as to what the shape of the vehicle you want to fool the people into thinking that it is. So that was kind of cool. Next up, I have a uh, guest that's joining me on TDD Report this week, and he's going to be talking about somebody that may be coming and helping us guard our shoreline. So I got some, uh, I got some news you can lose. Today, apparently, Ahmadinejad from Iran announced that he is sending 
the Iranian Army Department of the Iranian Navy, which falls under the Army, figure that one out. He's going to have them start patrolling the Atlantic coastline of the United States. This guy is a friggin' genius. And apparently he made mention that the United States is always over in the Persian Gulf patrolling their coast, which I'll tell you more about that later. So he is going to send his navy, which consists of uh, some old, probably Spruance class U.S. Navy ships and some other crap they bought from uh, Russia. He's going to send them through the Suez Canal. Yep, they're going to do it again. And they're going to come over here through the Med and patrol our coastline. Which, you know, they will kindly, very kindly respect our 12 mile, uh, 12 mile limit. Thanks, Tom, for that report. And last up, as of Friday, which would be, depending on when you're watching this report, that would be a couple of days ago or maybe even a week ago, depending on when you're watching. Um, Friday, the Tevatron at Fermilab shut down. Their last day was Friday, and they shut it down at 2 p.m., and that event was actually webcast. I did miss it because I was busy during that time and didn't get to see it. It has a little bit more meaning for me because my brother-in-law actually works at Fermilab, and I've been there many many times now this isn't the end of fermilab it's the shutdown is for the tevatron part but fermilab also works on other things besides just the tevatron and there's talk of maybe developments in the linear accelerators and maybe making even other types of uh, um, accelerators in the future there's one particular one they're ca talking about called the muon accelerator or i think it's called muon collider that they may be working on in the future for fermilab so um, they may be down for now, but they're not down and out of the count, so hopefully some money will be sent their way and we can keep up with the technology. It would be pretty bad if we totally fell behind in the physics technology for the United States. That would, uh, that would be rather sad. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody, and I will catch you next week.